Hello everybody and welcome to Starting Small Music. I'm Justin McCormick and you're about to hear a conversation with an artist, musician, and music industry professional on their journey and how they got to where they are today. At Starting Small, we like to take you on a journey uncovering the untold stories of your favorite songs and artists. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Just keep a smile on your face and it be okay. Try not to be bitter, you gotta do it either way. So when life throws a jab, you gotta duck out of the way. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Starting Small Music Podcast. Today we have Churro, artist manager at Red Light Management. How are you doing today, Churro? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. So getting right into your story, where did you grow up and what was your childhood like? Um, I grew up in Northern California, a little town called Yuba City. Uh, it's about 45 minutes north of Sacramento. Most people know where Sacramento is at. So I always say 45 minutes north of there, a um, little agriculture town. Mm-hmm. Grew up, dude, I went to Catholic school for like seven years from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade. And um, I mean, we just kind of kind of got into it over there as far as the music scene goes. It wasn't a whole lot going on. And yeah. and until I got to like high school is when I first picked up like my first guitar. Mm-hmm. And that was the kind of start of it all right there in freshman year of high school. Very cool. Now, yeah. when you were growing up, even before you picked up the guitar, what kind of music were you listening to? I know that a lot of people don't realize Northern California is pretty country. Were you listening to country or what were you listening to? I, mean, I was raised on country. My dad played a lot of Garth Brooks, Randy Travis, Travis Tritt. Nice. Um, so I was raised on that. My, I mean, listening to music, um, all the time, I kind of grew into every genre. I listened to everything to hip hop, rap, to rock, alternative, like Leonard Skinner, it was a, a big start off for me, you know, playing music and, and picking up a guitar and learning Leonard Skinner songs and whatnot. So it was uh, kind of a mixture of everything. Um, in high school, we started playing music, screamo, emo mm-hmm. bands like that. Um, yeah. It's but a little bit of everything. So what was it that made you want to pick up the guitar? Was it you were bored and wanted something to do? Or was it because you were listening to these records and wanted to kind of emulate what they were doing? Honestly, so my buddy Josh, he's one of my best friends growing up. He went to a different high school Mm -hmm. and he took an alternative class, which was music. And he got a guitar and he came over one day and he's like, look what I got. And he started showing it to me and he's like, you should buy one and we should start a band. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of the start of it all right there. So I ended up buying the exact same guitar, different color. And um, yeah, we just started learning the same songs and we just started playing music together. And that's, that's exactly where it started. And um, I mean, it was, it was a blast. Like it was this acoustic guitar at first and we moved to electric and then we bought amps and then we bought bigger amps and then we got a drummer and it just kind of all started falling into place. So I'm surprised you didn't get stuck with the bass then with your friend getting the guitar first. I know, I know. It's so <laughs> funny too. I've got some really embarrassing pictures of us like back to back with our guitars. And, you know, it's, it was, it was just uh, the thing to do. I was lead guitar. He was rhythm, you know, cool. it, was, it was cool. Yeah. So you're talking about playing in bands in high school. I saw that you actually uh, went to high school with Tyler Rich and you guys played in some bands together. Well, when yeah. did you guys first meet? Uh, we met actually like right before high school. Uh, we had some mutual friends and we went to high school together. Tyler's one of my best friends. He was the best man in my wedding. Um, I was in his wedding. He's just such a good dude. One of the best people you'll ever meet in your life. And he, I'll never forget. So when I first, when I first got him into one of our bands, I had actually gone on vacation. My band was practicing while I was gone and I come back and Tyler's there to watch and hang out. And the next thing you know, he just grabs the mic and he starts singing into the mic and they had pretty much brought him in while i was gone and i mean i had no problem with it i loved it i have my best friend in the band it was pretty cool so high yeah. school it was like freshman year i think is when we first started playing in bands together um but yeah yeah it was a while it was fun that was a good time now when you guys were playing in bands back then uh, could you have said that you thought he was going to go on to do what he did or were you guys all kind of all just doing it for fun at that point I was definitely doing it for fun. I mean, I absolutely love music. I've always loved music. I've always been surrounded by it. Tyler was always the one who was going to make it big. He was always the one that was going to pursue this. He won like most likely to become like a, a musician, you know, growing up 
and in high school he won that award and stuff so we always knew he was going to be the one to like just crush it and whatnot so but yeah. me i was uh, i was always involved in in music even i lived in denver for a little while even and um i gave up the music side of it and started the business side of it and just started kind of working with other bands and things like that so uh, i took a different turn but it was still music related cool now i don't know if this story comes later in life or if it happens happened as a child but when did you get the name churro um, so I lived in San Diego for a little while, well, for like six years, actually. And a bunch of my friends were all big Disneyland guys. So we love going to Disney, um, uh, amusement parks, rides, haunted houses, whatever it is. We, we love that kind of stuff. So Disneyland being pretty close, we always had a season pass. We'd go all the time. One time I went and I had just, I don't know what came over me. I decided I was just going to eat a churro every time we saw one and so i ended up getting going through 11 churros in one day and then the joke just became oh you're gonna turn into a churro if you eat another churro and uh the name just kind of stuck and it became like almost like a brand and it's just kind of just kind of happened that way but it wasn't that long ago it was like six seven years ago when i got that that's funny now in yeah. high school like senior year what are you thinking uh like you're about to graduate are you thinking you're wanting to do something in music what's that thought process like so I was uh, I was still playing music at the end of high school, and I I knew I was going to be moving to Denver. So mm-hmm. I moved to Denver. I sold my amp, kept my guitars, but sold my amp. And when I got to Denver, I really didn't know how to get into the music scene. Uh, at that point, I was listening to a lot of hardcore music, a lot of emo, screamo bands, stuff like that. And uh, I kind of started going to shows and just networking and with people just to kind of get my in. Um, but I really didn't know what route it was going to take me. I didn't think I was going to go into playing music anymore or if I was into the business side of it. I actually ended up designing t-shirts and stuff and like selling merch for bands out there. So helping them kind of grow their, their world, their merch world and stuff. Very cool. Yeah. Now what, when is, uh, what did you go to college? Uh, what did you major in when you uh, went to school? So I went to University of Phoenix. I only did two years of University of Phoenix and it was uh, for business management. So I kind of followed that route for a little while, um, but I ended up kind of straying off a little bit and starting my own thing. And to me at that time, I was like a little too consumed. I couldn't do it. School was not honestly never really for me, but I found a way to kind of incorporate it um, with what I was doing for what I did learn in those two years as well too so it kind of helped out a little bit yeah now coming out of denver did you find your first artist while you're there or did you make a move and kind of pivot to start your new career no honestly for a while i kind of didn't do much other than like designing the t-shirts and stuff for bands around that area Mm -hmm. Um, so i moved back to california uh didn't do anything at all music related for years and years i ended up working i was working for verizon wireless for like 12 years Oh, wow. And so, yeah. So finally I was like, man, I'm just, I'm kind of burnt out from sales and I don't want to do this anymore. So I took uh, a little bit of time off and it's when Tyler hit me up and was like, dude, I need a tour manager. And I was like, no, man, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. You know, I was mm-hmm. our best friend. I don't want anything to get between us and whatnot. So um, he asked me a couple more times and finally his, uh, his radio rep was like, Hey, I bought you a ticket to Vegas we're going to Vegas for ACMs and we're going to tour manage Tyler this weekend. And so I did it and that's how it kind of all started. So it kind of just locked me in and kept me going. I was still living in San Diego at the time. Um, So I had to end up moving to Nashville at some point and uh, here we are. So what are those first kind of days out on the road with Tyler look like kind of learning how to be a tour manager? So obviously I was super green. I, I hadn't done anything in the tour manager world. Um, Basically, I kind of got brought in just because I was Tyler's best man. I was going to know his interests, like, you know, best interest in him at all times and learning the business from, you know, some pros. We brought in a guy named Timmy Abercrombie who would, he tour managed uh, Bowling for Soup Mm. and a bunch of other people too. So I learned a lot from that guy being on the road. Um, but the first couple of years were wild. I was wearing a lot of hats. You know, I picked up a camera, started doing content for Tyler, started doing merch for Tyler, um, just kind of learned it all, like as much as I could. And I just basically anything I could absorb to grow myself. That's what I did. So, yeah. 
So had you not picked up a camera until that point? Cause I know that like, that is a major part of your life, like till this day. Yeah. Um, honestly, man. So when I was touring with Tyler, that was the start of like social media was really getting into like video edits and like live shows and stuff like that. And you really saw it start to pick up. So I wanted to kind of change the game and for him. And basically I didn't have a camera. I didn't have the money to buy a camera. So I was shooting everything on my phone and shooting on a GoPro. And I would just come back and I would just make edits as best as I could. And it's something that he didn't have at that time. And a lot of people didn't have it at that time either. So I kind of did the best I could with that. And then um, the pandemic happened. 2020 came along. And at that time I was like, look, I got to figure out something. So I bought a real camera Mm -hmm. and that's when I started doing photo shoots and videos and doing a lot more content and stuff. So it kind of actually picked up during 2020 is what really got me more serious into it. Really cool. Now, when you first moved to town, uh, did you automatically get picked up by like some uh, agency that was doing management that wanted to bring you on as a manager or were you just doing uh, Tyler at the time? No, man. I honestly, I just kind of uh, was working with Tyler for the longest. Um, like I said, you know, he's one of my best friends. So I was happy to do whatever he needed um, at that time. And then I got an offer with uh, Matt Stell. Mm-hmm. And that was for like an assistant tour manager position. So they needed some help like running merch and that's my world. So I ended up kind of helping organize that whole thing, um, doing assistant tour managing, guitar teching, like whatever, whatever he needed. I was there for that as well, too. And then uh, moving up onto other things as well after that. So it, it all kind of progresses over time. You know, things mm-hmm. get, things change, your interests change and like the business changes. So you kind of just go with the flow and see what happens. Now I saw when you were uh, first joined Matt Sell, you uh, raised his merch sales by like 90%. What was your sales pitch? How are you flagging people down? Oh, dude, honestly, man, I had to uh, really just get more designs and stuff in there. Mm-hmm. His merch... Um, I mean, it was tough because they hadn't done a whole lot the year prior, Mm -hmm. but during 2021 is when we really started like heavily touring. We called it the year of the mule, year of the mule, man. We worked every show we could. We didn't say no to nothing. We just went on the road and we just gone as much as possible and uh, just really just pitched merch like crazy. Um, I mean, a big thing with merch is that's kind of, in my opinion, it's what gets you to the next show. You know, it's what puts food on the table on the bus. It's what put gas on the bus. It's what gets you there. So um, it's very, very important to me. And especially with like any artist that I work with, I always like to to focus on that. And obviously, since I know that world pretty well, um, I, I was able to yeah help him out quite a bit with that. It was awesome. For sure. Now, when did the conversation start with Red Light uh, being interested in having you uh, join their team? Um, so I was on the Morgan Wallen Dangers tour. I was a production assistant on that whole tour. Once that was over, I wanted to really make a move into uh, management. That's originally what I moved to Nashville for originally is to become some kind of an artist manager, day-to-day manager mm-hmm. and, um, and do that. So I was like, okay, look, I've got a bunch of offers on the table for getting back on the road. I want to exhaust all my options of finding an in-town manager job before I go back on to the road and I just figured in my opinion it was time for me to to do something like this and I ended up um dropping my resume to a guy named Ryan Wepley who then passed my resume over to Mandolin Monchik she manages uh Ben Chapman Meg McCree Lainey Wilson and she reached out to me and was like hey I need someone to help me out with uh these two artists they're amazing you got to hear them she didn't know but i already knew them uh, i done some content work for um, rob snyder who runs like revival oh, cool. and yeah and basically i've done some videos for them and so i already knew them so it was pretty cool um but i mean i accepted i was so happy to do that like work with your two friends again and um yeah it was it was freaking awesome it was it was cool but yeah mandolin monchik reached out to me and and uh, she's the one who kind of put me in this place and very grateful for her. So as a day-to-day manager, what does your day-to-day look like in managing these artists? Um, it depends on what's going on. So like right now, Ben and Meg are both very busy. We've got uh, Ben's releasing an album. I don't know when this is, uh, podcast is going to air, but he's got an album coming out on the 24th. Okay. Meg's got one coming out on the 3rd. 
And so we're just kind of doing all the things leading up to that. You know, we're designing, you know, posters and release shows and just um, album artwork and all kinds of stuff. So it's a lot of stuff leading up to it, but it's a uh, it's logistics really. And, you know, we got mandolin. She's, she does the managing part. She puts everything in line and I make sure all the logistics happen. So things go get, get put into place correctly. For sure. Now you mentioned the Morgan wall and dangerous tour. I mean, one of the biggest tours in the past couple of years. And I mean, yeah. Morgan just has such a great, uh, great people around him. I, I, I met up with Tyler and Taco when they were in LA this past, uh, past couple of months ago. Do you have any uh, cool memories from the tour? Anything funny that stands out? Um, I mean, honestly, dude, that whole tour was absolutely amazing. I mean, best, best year of my life. It was so much fun. Um, there's a, there's a venue called Guilford in New Hampshire. And if you've toured, you know, this venue very well because it's like a summer camp. And when I say a summer camp, they have tree houses and there's like, you know, go-karts and bicycles and there's like a heated pool and putt-putt and they, they've just got it all. Anything you want to do, it's so much fun. And I played that venue a couple of times, but this one specifically stood out. We had a, we, we had two nights there. So they do like a bonfire and they like, they feed you so well. It's just one of the coolest places to go to. But when you go and play two nights, you get to have fun the first night. So you, we all were at the pool playing, I think we were playing, playing horse. I think we were playing, we called it pig just so the game wouldn't be so long because we had so many people. Yeah. Um, somebody made a, made a bet. We're like, okay, first person to lose has to like go across the stage with their shirt off. And so I'm terrible at basketball and I definitely lost at that game. So I was, uh, so I had to go across the stage during changeover right before Morgan set across the stage with my shirt off and i just remember uh our stage manager he was like oh no come over here and he made me push the push the piano or i think it was an empty case like down the thrust up the thrust all the way over back over um so it was it was funny it was it was a good time though that was one of the most memorable nights of the tour for sure that's hilarious yeah now as a manager uh, working in the music industry what's something you look for in an artist like when you're scouting someone out um honestly more than just raw talent now, you I look for personality. Mm-hmm. I, I think in a lot of times because you have to deal with so much PR and so much media and be on social media a lot, your personality is like a big, big factor. People need to be able to like you. You have to be able to um, be in the public eye and be appealing. You know what I mean? So if you if you go out there and like social media is not necessarily like your best trait, fine you can learn that stuff but your actual personality has to be has to be on point as well too so anybody can anybody can go out there and just post whatever but like if your quality of content and your personality don't match like it shows you know so mm-hmm. you can go on and sing sing great but if your personality is not there as well too i think that will also hold you back so now, kind of piggybacking off that question, do mm-hmm. artists still get signed to like management or record deals today just based off of like the music alone, like the, the no following at all? Or is it does a big social media following have like a big play in that them getting that deal? I think that social media has a big play in it now. Um, I think it makes it easier for I don't even want to say easier, but managers will look sometimes look for artists who are on social media and already have a big following. It helps out. Um, just to kind of build, you know, put, you know, seats, feet in the room and stuff. But it's, it does matter. Like musicians are musicians and they've got to be good and they got to put on a show. Ben Chapman, Meg McCree, those two are music lovers. Um, And I've said this many times, but like, if you go to one of their shows, you can tell what, what type of people they are. It's, they're amazing on stage. And that's like where they really come out of their shell. And that's where they, thrive is on stage um ben is one of the most like funnest people you'll ever meet he is amazing on stage when you put a guitar in his hands and i mean you can just tell that him his band just mesh so well together that the show is just just so natural it's it's cool it's cool to watch really cool yeah, to watch. for sure now i like to close my interviews by asking What's a piece of advice you'd uh, give to an aspiring musician? And then also in your spot, someone that wants to be a manager in the music industry. Um, I mean, I always say that networking is probably the most important thing ever. Mm -hmm. Um, Networking, networking, networking. And really it's all, it's not all about who you know, but it definitely 
is in this industry a big factor. Um, you know, it's a small town. Nashville is a very small town. And, you know, when you need to go meet people, you know where to go. Midtown, the Red Door, Losers, Winners, uh, these bars where everyone hangs out at. And so the more people you know, the more gigs that you take, it's it's very important. Um, one, of, one of my old TMs, he said, he actually said it in another podcast, but he said, this is such an experience-based industry that in the beginning, you shouldn't say yes to everything. Yeah, That's what I did. Even before I knew that, I mean, I said yes to everything, you know, whatever it was, um, I would agree to do it. Even if it was for free, I worked for free for almost a year at one point because I just needed some experience. I needed to learn this new thing or whatever it was. I would just jump in there and be like, I'll do it. Yes. I'll take the job, you know, whatever it may be. If it's going to help me grow, that's, that's completely about like priceless. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I would have, uh, I would have people reaching out and doing to do stuff. And I would just say yes to whatever, whatever it was. If you, I can add it to my resume, I'm, I'm doing it. But that, that's probably the biggest thing, honestly, is networking. You need to, you need to know people out here. And uh, yeah, the more, the more people you know, the better, for sure. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. And check out my music on all streaming platforms at Justin McCormick. See you guys next time.